Professor Anil Kumar joined IIT Bombay in 1998 after his PhD from Indian Institute of Science and postdoc in Eindhoven and Florida. Uh, he also spent some time in 2002 in the lab of Professor Alan McDermott, Nobel laureate. So he is a trained uh, polymer chemist who forayed into uh, conducting polymers. And then uh, right now his main research interest lies in the area of flow chemistry which can uh, scale up uh, chemical synthesis uh, without having to use very bulky reactors. So, this, uh, the uniqueness of uh, Anil's approach to research has been is that he has always uh, tried to make things that would eventually uh, reach the market and be useful at uh, some for some section uh, of uh, real day use. So, while working on conducting polymers, Anil's group developed this electronic nose which has been used by the Indian Armed Forces to detect explosives and about flow chemistry he is one of the pioneers in India and he has trained a lot of industries uh, and uh, they come to him and they get trained and they are trying to update their processes so that flow chemistry can be used uh, in their manufacturing process. And uh, as I said, the uniqueness of Anil is that there are two ways of approaching industry. One is that we can uh, solve industry's problems, something that they bring to us. The other is that we can propose problems so that industry comes to us trying to learn something. Anil by and large has taken the second route which is quite unique and extremely challenging. So, it is no wonder that this year he has got this IRCC award for impactful research. Thank you, Aninda. And let me upfront acknowledge IRCC for the recognition. So, it's interesting all the four themes relate to the all the four presentations of manufacturing. So, water management to process, additive manufacturing, and electro and chemical manufacturing. So, today we we'll look into what we contribute towards the chemical manufacturing. So, we help industries as well as we have our own core research areas where we take materials and look into all the applications color changing devices, explosive sensor which is in the market currently now and then we look at the printed super caps and nano materials and printing from there. So, this is the issue with the manufacturing of the chemicals. You tell anybody that you work with the chemical factory, this is the image which public has it. That it creates pollution and it leads to accident and you keep hearing here and there. So, traditionally these industries were set up outside the cities. But then you require manpower, the cities go, grow around it and then it leads to the conflict and leads to the problem. There is another issue with all of these accidents, that is the Bhopal tragedy, that is your BP, that is your cyanide spill in Romania, that is a China accident. The starting materials are very safe and the product which we use are also very safe. But the in between steps which you require to go from point A to point D could be very dangerous one and that is where this intermediate which come and have the problem and if you look at the chemical manufacturing over last 500 years nothing much has changed in terms of the technology. We still basically you can define as you take a container, you put your chemicals into that, you heat it and you stir it and you should get the product out of it. And in that domain the containers become better and you have more sensors over it. The issue with these things is that Larger is the better is the philosophy. So, what happens in chemical manufacturing? If somebody makes 100 kg per hour, you have a cost. If somebody sets up the same process at 1000 kg per hour, that cost will come down. So, as the volume increase, the cost come down and everybody is interested in the cheapest material or the cheapest chemical and the cheapest drug available. So, since the technology is the batch manufacturing, you have no choice. You Take a process, you design your business model and you set up a manufacturing unit and you only pray that somebody else does not set up a bigger manufacturing unit than that or the process itself does not change by the time you got your money back. So, larger is the better but you land up in a catch 22 situation. You require large capital requirement and you hope nobody else has in a reasonable time reason to put bigger plant than you. Dynamics should not change, either the product becomes non-viable or the technology to make it changes. And then you of course can't sleep because all the safety environment and regulatory issues will keep hounding you. And the reason this happens is that if you take two molecules and if you let them react and if they would 
like to react, then the reaction should happen in femtosecond time domain. And that's what happened in all your atomic bomb, nuclear energy. So you let the molecule react and the heat it generates and reaction should happen in sub picosecond time domain. Now imagine you have to do that at a multi-ton scale, the amount of heat which is going to be generated cannot be taken out in the real time and that leads to explosion and that's how you design hydrogen bomb nuclear reactor where a lot of heat is generated and you tap that heat in a controlled way. So that becomes a technologically challenging work. So this is the issue. Whereas we do reaction whenever you manufacture is in terms of hours and days. And the whole reason is the heat management is a technological problem. There's heat going to be generated. If the technology allows me to take only 100 units of heat out per unit time, I should not let more than that heat get generated. And if you put these two things in together based on the container you have, that's a stirring speed and in the heat you take out. It turns out that the reaction can only be done in hours and days time scale. If you try to do faster than that, it will lead to out of control heat generation and that will lead to explosion and that's the danger you set over there. So the whole idea of 300, 400 year research in this is you can't get speed and control together. So you need to sacrifice one to get the other and control is more important so sacrifice speed and you slow down the reaction from femtosecond all the way to hours. So you are looking at 20, 30 orders of slowing down the reaction. So last 300 years of chemical research is how do you slow down a reaction? If you can slow down the reaction to a level where the technology allows you to take heat out, you balance the two and you have a safe process and a commercially viable process, you move on. Now with changing scenario, changing technology, now newer technology which we call continuous flow technology allows you to take more heat out per unit time. Because these reactors have higher surfaces of the volume, you can take more heat out, which means if you can take more heat out, you can have more number of molecules react per unit time. And you can do reactions faster or traditionally chemists call it ultra fast because chemists are more comfortable with hours and days and if you tell them the reaction can be done millisecond, to them it becomes ultra fast. So this is what we say, you develop a continuous process and then your heat dissipation is much much better and then you can get better and fast manufacturing. This is not anything new, this has been practiced by engineers for last 200 years, the first Haber process for ammonia is a continuous, but the whole continuous domain was part of the engineering domain where you give them a process and few 10, 20 engineers will take their lifetime or maybe few lifetimes and you develop the production continuous based on that process like olefin, oil or anything of that. The amount of efforts need to go to develop that is large can only be validated if your volumes are extremely large. So when you go to oil and petrochemical industries or you go to food industries, they have been continuous because the volumes are extremely large. Rest of the chemicals, the fine chemicals and the pharmaceutical chemistry, the volumes are not, they are still large but they are not so large that somebody can invest all their life developing a continuous process. And the process are large in number. So these two things were not in sync together. And if you take a trial on a large continuous operation, the number of trials required is very large and it will be again unviable. So with changing time now, engineers have come out with tools which have been miniaturized and these miniaturized tool now allow a chemist now to try different chemistry. So you pretty much plug and play, you take different tools, you know all types of chemistry which are learned in 15 years, you know which one is going to be used and you have to do mix and match with that. And mix and match can be done if you know the chemistry and the tooling and you put together and you develop a process. And that's what is the whole idea and then now the technology allows us to do the reactions which are around millisecond to microsecond. We are still almost 9 to 10 orders away from where the reaction ideally should be done. And hopefully someday technology will allow us to do the reactions over there. And because of this miniaturization, what has happened is the whole chemical plants will shrink now. So we are talking of very small reactors. Now it's a continuous manufacturing. So continuous has the advantage. Your throughput is time multiplied by the volume. Whereas a non-continuous is the volume which was deciding the cost.
so the paradigms are shifting now earlier people used to talk like i have a better plan because i can have a 50000 liter reactor and they won't tell the time the all the parameters or volumes now times have changed where we talk both the volume and the time so if your time is millisecond and your volumes are let's say 100 ml you will produce 20 30 000 liters a day which was anyway produced by a 50000 liter reactor and since it's only 100 ml reactor you can just carry it in your bank bag put it anywhere anything goes wrong you worry about 100 ml so the future of chemical production will be the reactors will be put inside the explosion proof cabinets and even if the reaction explodes and anything happens it will be self contained which means there is no interaction with the outside world which will have and you take it wherever you want to clean it and do that so the whole idea is these bigger units will shrink batch failure will decrease even if batch fails your cost per batch decreases and then it becomes safer and faster so that's where and this is these are volume independent people now can look into this for even smaller volume production which is the fine chemical and the pharmaceutical so they started showing lot of interest in this and the whole idea is there is no reason to do a centralized production right now if you look at the chemical factories produce large volumes and then the products are distributed around the globe the reverse model will be now you produce the raw material like you go to a grocery store buy your food items you buy your chemical items as a community right now we are thinking and then you have modular units and you tell them i need 10 aspirin or 20 paracetamol whatever you need it will be produced there and that model has been done now there are quite a few successes there where you can have a, like as a refrigerator size unit it has all the components built in you just feed the raw ingredient and it'll give you 10 to 15 doses of some four uh, drugs with all formulation and fda approved so you don't need to store large pharmacy inventory as and when you need and if you have a small community you can have it and that's the future production and the cost does not change with volume here and it allows us now since we can do reactions in microsecond to millisecond it opens up a domain which was never accessible so all over chemistry was defined what you can do in by adding manually which takes an hour or half an hour so scientists have never really looked into what would happen or what was happening in millisecond and microsecond and that's possible now and people have come out very interesting idea of time resolved synthesis and then there are lot of species or lot of compounds required which don't survive more than 10 15 minutes particularly for biomedical imaging so you can manufacture somewhere else and take it there by the time that's already over so now these machines can be made available on site you prepare it and just use it is just a minute transfer from one place to another so all these things can be done on demand on spot synthesis is the future which we are looking at cost does not change and all the hazard as your phosgenes your methyl isocyanides the whole idea what was there is i have to do a reaction tomorrow at 50000 liter and if it requires phosgene i have no choice but to keep 10000 liters of phosgene ready today evening so that i can do the reaction tomorrow i have no choice and i only pray to the god nothing happens in that evening so you can postpone your synthesis of methyl isocyanide or phosgene till midnight or 1 o'clock but you need to give it a time so that other guys are ready when you say go ahead and that time gap was what was creating the issues there and now these are miniaturized the state of the art now it's completely automated labs now so you will be seeing labs where not too many people are working there's one person who is thinking and the chemistry gets done this is a pfizer example where they set up the whole machine to develop the chemistry around 6000 reactions are done over 3 days and these reactions are not done completely they are completely autonomous not even doing the reaction even analysis and the morning <clears throat> scientists come you get full plot of all your reaction conditions all your yields and everything else and everything so forth so you really don't need imagine 6000 reactions have been done you're looking for 20 chemists a period of over one year and another 10 chemists to analyze that here no person involved one thinking guy designs the machine you put the machine in 3 days all the job gets done so the machines are expensive but if you look at the time cost and the manpower cost they are not really that expensive this is what we are saying now all hazardous chemicals accidents will be the 
past thing now that you just produce one of the hazardous through one of the flow reactors which are volumes are very small don't store it use it in another flow reactor and both of them are put in a small container your throughput does not change because your throughput is time into volume and time from hour has come down to millisecond so your volume from 50000 liter can come down to 100 ml and that's the difference what is and the whole thing is to put these tools together and how to use it is not taught in educational institute yet it's for engineers it's very easy for a chemist it's very hard chemists are very comfortable with the compounds but the tooling is really handicap and it's been almost getting eliminated from all types of education there are no workshops in colleges there are no tooling to be taught so we decided this is another way we typically do reaction because the safety issue now is only up to 150 200 degree centigrade now with these tools it's possible to do solution phase chemistry all the way up to 400 500 so this space was not available to explore only this is the space where all the chemistry has explored now this is the space available and you see new and very interesting chemistry just give you a few quick example how these things are evolved this is one of the reaction this reaction is typically done in an industry by the most experienced chemist you do at minus 78 degree centigrade and with a drop wise addition of the reagent because your heat generation is so much you need a delta t of minus 78 then only that heat can be managed with these tools now this reaction now this is a small tool put in this cabinet you do this reaction at room temperature at at 100 liter per hour of the same reagent which is flowing which was drop wise addition imagine minus 78 drop wise 200 liter per hour at room temperature and a 1 meter cube is the total footprint and that's what just changes the whole economics and everything from there then this is the largest flow reactor which has been put over china now there were 25000 liter tanks and 20 of them put together will produce 10000 tons per annum of a chemical agrochemical the whole process now has been replaced by a 7 meter long flow reactor which is 400 mm diameter now and it gives the same throughput as 10000 nm per 10000 tons per annum so that's how things are changing so fast that it is almost like you still thinking that you will print this, uh, your roll to roll and then you'll still take photography from there now it's a digital revolution same thing is happening in the chemical manufacturing it has to change and it's not taught in places so we decided that we learn ourselves we picked up all of these tools none of these are manufactured in india because these are just very advanced stages tool and they're just very prelim they are very just most of them are startup companies they themselves are just struggling to survive and they will they are building up nicely now so we picked up everything we worked with them on the bench we did all the mistakes and we were lucky that we could finally put in a place state of the art facility so we have all types of reactors ever designed and every chemistry can be executed from 20 micro liter all the way to 80000 liters per day process volumes using these tools now in our labs and then of course we developed the course to interact with the industries so we invite industries for three of their scientists can spend three weeks on our lab we have developed a full i teach them theory in the morning and then they work on the tools in the from 11 to 6 and within 3 weeks we can train them on all types of things like teaching them how to drive so we teach them how to use all the tools what type of chemistry should be done where so that's one domain and another domain we take their process sometimes they say we don't want to do that or own so we also develop so this is the ongoing activity these are the one which we have completely done now at any given time we have two or three industries in our lab working with this and these are the people who work with us who have been trained and it took lot of effort to convince students that this also is possible because it's still at the interface and domain and it's not easy because everybody looks for quick and next and traditional way of doing it so it takes a while but now finally after 4 to 5 year of struggle we have stabilized it and it works very well so these are the students who decided to move in the flow and again thank them and thank you all for listening and i'll be happy to take any question uh